Welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of May. In May, I read eight books. The majority of them were nonfiction and short. The moods uh, that most of them had uh, were emotional, lighthearted, or reflective. To me, May felt like a really small reading month, um, partly because I've been reading, I feel like, a lot over the past few months, and um, this was also comprised of a lot of short books this month. And I also, like, I worked on several other books, but I didn't finish anything, and that always feels... I mean, it, it, it's normal for me, but I would prefer to actually finish something, so I need to focus, which is not happening in June, but that's okay. The first book that I finished in May was Melt With You by Jennifer Dugan. And this was an arc. I started it at the end of April, um, and it came out towards the beginning of May. This is a YA romance that focuses on Fallon, who is dealing with the fallout after hooking up with her best friend. Um, they didn't talk about it afterwards, and she's really upset. They are now no longer friends. However, they have to put up with each other over the summer because their mothers co-own an ice cream truck, and they're going to be going to a really important festival event, and they are the ones that have to be there. Um, so this kind of focuses on what happens during this road trip. Now, there were a lot of things that were cute about this book. I like the idea of a road trip, second chance, there were a lot of cute puns with the ice cream. However, this I don't think was really for me. It relied too much on miscommunication for my taste. Um, the main character was extremely averse to actually talking about what had happened. Um, and yeah, a lot of a lot of their disagreement was just the fact that neither of them were on the same page with literally anything, and it could have been resolved um, a lot quicker. Now, I do understand that some miscommunication definitely makes sense. Um, I even think that this situation probably isn't far fetched. Uh, however, it just for me personally was just too too much. Also, the type of character who Fallon is, like the character whose head we're in. I was also kind of irritated with, uh, be, not just because of the miscommunication, but just because of how she was. I think I've talked about this in my Messy Queers video, that like, I'm just really tired of reading about Virgos, uh, especially like Virgos that have a Pisces placement that's just absolutely fucking their shit up. I, it's, it's also, it's similar to the reason why I didn't like Honey Girl all that much. And it's got a lot more to do with me um, than the books themselves, but that's just what I didn't necessarily care for. Um, it's not bad, especially if, um, uh, you're okay with miscommunication. I do think, like I said, it, it is a valuable tool. Like, there's a reason that a lot of people use it because miscommunications is, you know, widely realistic because people are allergic to talking about their problems and emotions. It wasn't necessarily for me, but it was pretty cute. Um, so if it sounds like something that you would like and you don't really mind um, that sort of issue, definitely check it out. Um, it was, I think, like the writing was really like cute and quirky, um, which I think is endearing in a YA novel most of the time. Next, I read a kid's book, Night Owl by Christopher Dennis. It won Barnes & Noble Children's Book Award, um, which is why I read it. Uh, because I work there and have to talk to people about it. But it was cute. Um, a sweet story. Uh, really adorable art. Not really much to say about it. I usually don't say too terribly much about kids' books. Um, unless there's something really big. But it was nice. Um, the other kids' book that I read this month um, was Stella Brings the Family, which is a gay Father's Day book. It was really cute. And, um, it's good, like, it's good for Father's Day, but I think that it's good for talking about lots of different types of non-traditional families, not just, um, gay families. And I thought that was really cool, especially as someone who comes from, uh, kind of a, a weird or non-traditional family situation. Um, this next book is not 
technically a kids picture book. Um, I think that you could read it to kids. I think that it was shelved in young adults when I got it. Young adults could enjoy it. Middle grades could enjoy it. I think it would make more sense shelved in middle grade. Um, but that's the Sprite and the Gardener. This was fucking adorable. I bought it literally just for the artwork. I didn't, I knew nothing about this book other than it was half off and it looks like this. Um... It's really cute. Um, it focuses on sprites that used to make the plants grow. Now that um, people kind of have more of a hand in things, they have kind of a different role. But this sprite finds um, this little girl and helps her grow the garden. And it's just really wholesome about like friendship and nature and working together to build something. It was really sweet. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. Going over to the one nonfiction that I finished, um, I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya. This is a small kind of um, meditation on misogyny. The first portion of this book, she, well, there's an introduction and then the first larger portion of this book, she talks about memories that she has of um, having violence committed against her, being harassed, being bullied, worse. Um, and uh, that part is actually written in second person from the perspective of the, like, the abuser, the, the person committing violence. Um, and then the second part of it is more talking about all of this. I think that this was extremely effective. I think that she is able, especially in such a short span of time, to talk about a lot of nuanced things, including how, you know, it's not just men who are culpable in this, but all of us kind of contribute to this, and we need to be aware of how we do that. Um, this was really excellent. I've read uh, one of Vivek Shreya's poetry collections before, which was really beautiful, um, and one of her fiction novels, which is also really great. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the rest of her stuff is like as well, because it's been really good so far. Then the final three things that I read were all rereads. Um, I would say they're very different from each other. Um, so I'm gonna go, I guess chronologically, even though the last one is literally cursed. Um, well, the first one is haunted so there's that at least but anyways the first reread that I finished this month was Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo which I fucking adored I actually only read this for the first time in January I listened to the audiobook and despite um not really liking the narrator I fucking loved it I had to buy a copy as quickly as possible and I started rereading it around that time too and then just like never finished but I reread the bulk of it this uh in May um this is southern gothic meets dark academia it focuses on Andrew who uh was planning to move back to his hometown to live with his friend Eddie as they both go to grad school but shortly before he can move in Eddie dies by apparent suicide Andrew still moves in um and is determined to figure out how Eddie actually died, all while being actually literally haunted by Eddie's ghost. So you're getting to see these different pieces of Eddie's life unfold um, with Andrew digging all of this stuff up. All of the stuff that Andrew didn't know about Eddie's life in Nashville, um, but also unpacking um, what actually went on between the two of them. There's so much good shit in here. I struggled to put it in such a small um, time frame, like in a wrap up. I'm actually going to have a full video on this to actually go in depth because there are so many layers to all of this. Um, he's looking across multiple people. Like I said, there's the dark academia piece. So you're looking at the people within academia to see if they could have contributed to Eddie's death, but also seeing some of the systemic problems there. Um, you're getting to look at this friend group who he again doesn't really know that well. 
there's also a lot of unpacking like queerness um and all of the stuff with the ghosts like one of the things that was just like it's it seems like simple at face value but like, just like experiencing it was kind of mind-blowing like the literal haunting of the ghost right beside being haunted by memories and what could have been, especially as he's figuring out that things were not as heterosexual as they first appeared. Um, this is just really fucking brilliant. Like I said, I'm gonna put a full video up. It's not filmed yet, but I do have the outline. I'm gonna go through um, some of my annotations and really kind of talk about the themes that really stood out to me and stuff about the characters. So this is fucking brilliant. If... Uh, basically everybody needs to read it. It does have some, like, blood and, like, I feel like there's no point in, or very few points in the book where Andrew is actually, like, clean. He's constantly covered in dirt or something. So if that grosses you out or, like, a, you know, check story graph for content warnings, but if you are even slightly inclined towards horror and, like, queer books, you need to read this. After that, I finished my reread of Perks of Being a Wallflower. I buddy read this with Brent. It was a reread for both of us. This I read several times uh, throughout like 2013. And um, this was my first time rereading it in quite a few years. I'd watched the movie probably 2015, 16, 2016, we'll say. Um, but it's been a while since I've read the book. And I'm really really glad that we did this reread. We re re we reread the book and then watched the movie. And it was really interesting reading this at the point in life that I'm in right now. Um, there were a lot of things that were really similar that stood out to me in uh, my other reads of the book, but there's a lot different as well. For instance, I really like the way that this is written. It's in epistolary format, so it's letters, and you really get the voice of the character who is writing them. Um, and I really love that. I also really love Charlie. He's such, he's so good. And, and I definitely resonate with a lot of this, like a little bit too much probably. Um, but with this reread, um, some more problematic, I guess, elements, I was able to notice a little bit more than before. Um, I don't think that they're any reason to not read the book. I think that they're mostly like show authentically what it was like to be in the 90s and most of it I think was meant to like show bad parts of you know just what's going on. Um, I also uh, something that I really I think saw in a different way in this reread was how um, violence is recreated and like kind of passing down generational violence or pain from person to person. And I know that that's kind of a big thing in the book in general and would have been something that I thought about for sure um, in my reads in 2013, but I definitely had a different and I think more intense reaction to it now. Um, it was really, really wonderful. I thought it was great. Re what, watching the movie right after reading it, I feel like like, the movie's still brilliant. It's still one of the best book-to-movie adaptations. I do think that I liked it better the first time that I watched it because it had been longer since I'd read it. However, it's still brilliant. Um, Emma Watson's accent was more distracting this watch through, but it was kind of funny. Um, uh, not that that's, like, a big piece of it whatsoever. I think that she still did brilliant at the part. Um, uh, and it was a really good time. So, then, <laughs> why did I save this until the end? I swear to God. Um, the last thing that I read in the month of May was another reread, um, the terrible, cursed, my immortal fan fiction. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't bother. Um, if you do know what that is, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> this was technically also a buddy read, I guess. 
Um, I was, I basically just have to harass my friends with shitty stuff sometimes. And this is like one of the most cursed relics of the internet and they hadn't seen it. So we read it together. Um, it's literal. I'm not even going to describe. Like I said, if you know what it is, you know, if you don't, you don't. It's shit tier, but also shit tier fan fiction, but it's so bad that it's excellent. Like in terms of, uh, comedic value. I suppose. It also says a lot about the early 2000s in a way. Like, it's obviously like peak, like bad, like cringe, if you will. Um, but like, first of all, nobody really dressed like that, but I feel like everybody wanted to. Like, there's a lot of attention to detail on um, the things that people were wearing, a lot of discussion of some of the bands, but the like bat shit like stuff that happened not all of it but like some of the passing remarks that are just like really kind of offensive that I don't even like I was reading some of it and was like I don't remember it being this like actually like like bad um uh like many, many a yikes. But the, the thing is, like, as, like, awful as, like, nonchalantly bringing up assault and just other really fucked up stuff, I think that that, like, as much as it could be a reflection of just a kid who knows nothing putting together this thing, I think that it really kind of reflects some of the stuff that was going on with media at the time. Um, because you did get a lot of, like, edgy, like, fucked up humor, kind of within this time frame, in the early, late 90s, early 2000s, really early 2000s. Um, so that was interesting to be able to read this, like, pile of garbage and be like, well, actually, I think this is really reflective of the state of things in the early 2000s. Maybe, maybe I just think too much. Um, but it was a time. Um, if you haven't read it, probably don't. Um, but anyways, uh, <sighs> that was my main reading. Why did I include, I could have just not included this in the wrap up. Honestly, I did read other fan fiction, but the thing that makes My Immortal different than this other fan fiction is that, for one thing, I think My Immortal is longer. It has a Goodreads page. Um, really the Goodreads page was the, the main thing. But also the other stuff that I've read and tried to find is like one shots or like stuff that I've read and then haven't continued reading. I was trying my damnedest to find really specific Summer Suns fan fiction and it just doesn't exist. The ones that I want don't exist. <sighs> but that's fine. I'll be fine. So I did have a few other things that I began reading or worked on reading at some point. Really, at the time of filming this, it's May 6th, or not May, it's June 16th. Um, so there is a very good chance that I started or worked on something and have kind of forgotten. My brain has not, you know, it's been an interesting time around here. So I read a little bit of Decarcerating Disability, which I talked about last month, um, which is looking at, um, uh, kind of a disability perspective on um like incarceration including talking about um different institutions that um uh, keep disabled people so like asylums and places like that um and talking about uh i guess prison abolition but looking from kind of a disability lens I also restarted the MLM basic course from FLP that I think I started reading several months back and then sat down, um, but I started reading it again this past month, got further. Um, it's very interesting. I've also been doing some adjacent podcast listening, so that's been cool. Um, uh, going in a different direction, so we've got politics. Now we have astrology, 
Um, I've been working through uh, Chiron, Rainbow Bridge, Between the Inner and Outer Planets by Barbara Hand Clow. I started this a few months ago. I talked about it in my wrap up. It's a little bit more out there than I was initially envisioning, but it does say some pretty interesting stuff. Um, hence, you know, why, why I'm finishing it. Because, like, as much as, like, there's some stuff that I'm like, what is kind of, what is happening? There will be bits that it's like, ah, well, that makes a weird amount of sense. So, it's pretty cool so far. Um, I'm about halfway through it. Um, so we've gone and, like, talked about Chiron through the, um, houses and the signs, and now we're gonna talk about aspects. And just to, like, explain a little bit, Chiron is one of the, um, asteroids that is between the, like, inner and outer planets, so between, um, I think, um, uh, Mars and Jupiter. But Chiron looks at, basically, where you need to be healed, like, one of the big wounds that you have, but also how you can help other people heal. Um, so I'm interested in that. Then the final book that I started was A Lady for Duke by Alexis Hall. This is a Regency adult romance, which is not something I typically read. I don't read a ton, a ton of adult romance, and I really don't read a lot of historical fiction. But I heard a few people on TikTok talk about it, and then I heard Audrey talk about it, and that's really what made me go from, oh, I should check that out, to I need to buy this immediately. So watch their wrap-up where they talk about this, because it's literally perfect. Um, I, um, well, I mean, the beginning of the month it was a lot smaller, but um, I'm still in the middle of reading it because, you know, that's just how it, how it goes sometimes. It's really would be fast to go through if I wasn't having to, like, stop and, like, scream every chapter because there's so much cute shit happening and my body can't process it. <laughs> um, but it's really good. Um, it, this focuses on, um, two people who were best friends. They go to the, to, um, a war and, uh, one of them appears to die, but really they faked their death so that they could transition. Um, and then they reconnect, and this is their story, and I'm fucking in love. I feel like I, well, first of all, need to read the rest of Alex Hall's other stuff, because I know that a lot of people really liked Boyfriend Material, and I hadn't read it because I was kind of on the fence, but, um, if his stuff is this good, like, I kind of feel like I need to read all of it, especially I really need, um by this person or otherwise, I really need to find more trans romances because there are just some particular things like in this one and in general, like I just need, I just need it. Um, trans romances, especially I need to find more T for T romances. Um, but that's something that I've been thinking about since I read The Meet Cute Diary. So if you have recommendations, let me know. But that was May's reading month. Um, if you've read any of these, let me know what you thought. Uh, hopefully I'll have that Summer Suns video up soon. I'm, I've actually been really excited to film that. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Bye.